I'm a senior research fellow in text and data mining at the Open University in the UK. I'm located in a town called Milton Keynes and live close to a town called Bletchley, which is a bit more interesting because it's a cradle of computing. Uh, this is where Alan Turing worked, worked during World War II to decipher the, decipher the Enigma code. And uh, what brings me to Austria is that uh, 14 days ago, approximately, I joined Research Studios Austria and I'm now splitting my time between Austria and the UK. And I'm very pleased to uh, be here and basically be able to and be given the opportunity to lead the studio data science. So when Professor Brook asked me to introduce our speakers in music information retrieval, I said, of course I will. And then I looked in the program a little bit and I realized that actually a little bit more than a short introduction was expected and I started to be a little bit worried. So I was thinking, I was fe feeling very confident about talking about information retrieval because this is my domain. I was feeling not so confident about speaking about music. So then I started to give it a little bit more thought and uh, I started asking the question, how is music information retrieval different from information retrieval? And that led me to the question of where is music in music information retrieval? And uh, maybe we can explore it for a little bit together. So as I said before, my experience in data science, in text mining, uh, I have really practical experience with recommender systems from a commercial company. Um, I also work in open science, but a lot of the methods that I have applied in my life were applied in the domain of research papers. So I worked on recommender systems for research papers uh, for a big company. I uh, worked for on information extraction from research papers, on data mining of research papers and so on. And I'm uh, behind a big system called Core, which is the world's largest data set of open access papers. And uh, uh, there's a team behind it. When it comes to music, then uh, essentially um, I appreciate good music. My wife is a pianist <laughs> and uh, I'm generally kind of interested in how technology can help people play music. And I u like kind of thinking about the use of music to support health. But uh, that doesn't really make me an expert on music. Okay, so just so that you know. and. To be completely honest, the key things which I find very interesting in terms of technology and music uh, are, uh, and that I have found this this whole day extremely enriching and, uh, and, and, a, and a, an amazing experience. But uh, I question whether this is actually this was not um, this was not music information retrieval. This was these were other parts of using technology to support music. So let me explore a little bit about what I understand music information retrieval is. And I think the best way to start exploring it is to look at what is information retrieval, and that's my domain. So information retrieval is an activity of obtaining information resources that are relevant to some information need, typically expressed by a query, from a collection of those resources. And essentially music information retrieval is information retrieval in music. Some people who work in, probably many, who work in music information retrieval will disagree with me. They will probably feel that this is too of a narrow definition of music information retrieval. Anyway, I started thinking about what are the sources of data that people in music information retrieval use when they are actually crunching and doing something interesting with the data. And when you look at it, it's often implicit user-generated data. For example, on systems like Spotify, the recommender systems and so on are very much based on user-generated data. Uh, explicit user-generated data, that means crowdsourced data, tags assigned to the data. Music scores, MIDI files, these are essentially structured data. Features extracted from the music itself, and then sometimes, rarely, the audio itself is used. But to me, as a data scientist, essentially music data are not so different from any other data. And I understand that this can be a little bit controversial to say at this workshop, but um, this is my thesis and I, I hope you can enrich me and telling me that I'm wrong. 
But let's have a look at some of the key applications of music information retrieval. So, search systems. Information retrieval, everyone uses Google, that's what information retrieval is. But in music, we don't very often communicate with machines in this way, although there are some exceptions to that. There are some queries, there are some systems that allow this, something called query by humming. So you can hum a tune and it can discover the song, but it's not very common for users to do so. So these systems are, to my knowledge, not widely used. But what is extremely popular in music industry uh, are recommender systems. But recommender systems across the industry, and I experienced this in other domains, um, there are generally two different approaches to, to recommendation, content-based methods and collaborative filtering. What appears to be the case at the moment, based on many evaluations in recommender systems studies, is that actually the collaborative filtering, especially those approaches based on methods called matrix factorization, tend to be the most successful. And actually, if you have used Netflix, if you have used probably Spotify, these will be the methods that they will apply. These are methods that are not applied necessarily, or that they mostly they will not use the content itself, but actually information about who played which song and based on the idea that uh, similar users like similar items. And these methods work very well if we have very large numbers of users compared to a smaller number of tracks, of videos. So if you, do, if you reverse the trend, then you probably have a more need for content-based methods, which is not so much the case in the music or video industry, but it might be the case in other domains. There are obviously problems with new documents, so, so with new music. And this is called, in the data science area, something, uh, this is called the cold start problem, which you usually can overcome by actually finding similar music, similar documents, similar videos based on the content itself. But for this presentation, my thesis is that actually in most in these music recommender systems, we are very often not using the music. Then we have automatic categorization of music. Some people might argue that this is often done based on the tags which were or, so, or metadata which were generated from the audio files. And then we have music generation, which I'm personally extremely excited about, and uh, we've seen some amazing examples today. And uh, uh, I, for example, searched for a system called MuseNet. Uh, it's very interesting, it's, uh, it's not very old. It's a deep neural network to generate music by a company called OpenAI, which is devoted to artificial intelligence for public good, and you can go on the internet and listen to it. Uh, and, and this is extremely exciting, but to me, this is not information, this is not music information retrieval, this is music generation. This is a different domain to me. Okay. So essentially, that leads me to uh, the conclusion that to a data scientist working with music data in music information retrieval is not too different from working with other data. And I understand that for mu musicians this can be extremely controversial, what I'm saying at the moment. But what I acknowledge fully is that music experts are completely indispensable. One of the things I'm extremely worried about is um, when we assign uh, creativity to machines and we put humans out of the out of the way. Uh, we just discussed during the lunch that there, there, is, there was a painting uh, generated by Google AI last year which sold at an auction for a very high price and uh, I question why would that, per why that person actually paid so much money for an for a, for a artificial intelligence generated painting because the value of the object itself is in its uniqueness. If I can recreate and an indefinite number of such objects, what is the value? Uh, and I think that the value really needs to be in the humanity. And, um, uh, and as a result also for music generation, I think maybe we should not think about music generation only in a way of going from start to the end, 
but maybe as a way to help composers to give them ideas which they can then further develop, which they can explore, but then allow the, the humans to be part of the creation itself, because that's why computers are to serve, not to rule, in my opinion. So, and also in data analysis and music information retrieval, I think uh, it's very important that the experts are indispensable and they are involved, especially in the use cases, if we, so that we understand how computers can serve the music technologists. We collect the requirements, we collect the labeled data, because I don't understand music sufficiently well to be able to tell musicians how to do that. We need to listen, we need to learn that, and we need to work together. And um, also in the evaluation of what the machines produce, that needs to obviously be reflected. We need th that judgment. So in conclusions, I have the advantage that I work in a field called data science, which is horizontally relevant in many different fields. We apply our skills in medicine, then in another project we apply them in music. I have been applying them very much in research. But we learn to work with people from various different domains. L we learn to listen to them and we try to get a deep understanding from these people so that we know what they want and we know how we will test that what we develop is good enough. So from this perspective, the Studio Data Science is very keen on working in this area of music in collaboration with others and in collaboration with the professionals. So that's, thank you very much for listening. And uh, I conclude, uh, where is music? In music information retrieval. And I kick it and I give this question to my followers <laughs> to answer. Thank you.